Good morning to you, brothers and sisters. We want to thank God uh, that we are still able to share the word of God, even in such a time like this. And you are also able to listen to the word of God. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to take you now to prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, you feed your people in the past. Feed us now. We come to you so that we hear your living word. Loving God, you feed your people in the desert. Feed us now. We come searching for the truth. Loving God, we know who you are. You fed your people on the hillside. Feed us now. We come for sustenance, for life. You fed your people in the past. Feed us now, Father. Feed us now, we are waiting. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? May God help us. In Jesus' name, Amen. I'm going to call uh, Brother Ben to come and do the reading of the Word of God. Uh, that is coming from John chapter 6, uh, verses 1 to 15. Okay, Brother Ben, come forward. Good morning and praise God for this wonderful week and uh, this beautiful cold weather. I'm more of a hot weather person myself, but anyway, this is great all the same. Uh, as Johnson mentioned, John chapter 6, 1 to 15. And it's a great verse. It's about Jesus feeding the 5,000. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is, the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish pass, Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Eight months' wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they, had all he, when they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the miraculous sign that Jesus did, they began to say, Surely this is a prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. And praise God, this is the word of the Lord. And yeah, we'll get Johnson back to share his wonderful message this week. Thank you so much for the reading of the word of God. Uh... This morning, I've decided to share with you on the theme, Who do you tend to? Who do you tend to? When you think about the, our Bible passage for today, I want you to picture it through the eyes of the disciples. They traveled the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, hoping to get away for some rest. So the crowds of people, thousands of them followed them, to this remote area. They were hungering for a miracle or a message of hope. 
the tired disciples hoped Jesus would send them away. The feeding of the 5,000 is a marvelous story of God's provision for human need. The focus is on bread, but the lesson is all about life. Let's begin here. First, when does 5 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 12? When does 5 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 12? Mathematically, never. But in the story of the feeding of the 5,000, the multiplication formula works just like that. Five loaves of bread, barley, bread, plus two small fish times Jesus, the one who is in control, equals 12 baskets of leftover bread. The key ingredient in that multiplication formula is Jesus, who when we give up to him to control, works multiplications, wonders, and even miracles in our lives. So the moment we give Jesus to take control of everything, he does wonders in our lives. Not only in our lives, but in everyone's life. So give Jesus what you have. And he can miraculously make much more than you can imagine out of it. How does this miracle of multiplication happen? It can happen if and when we remember Jesus is in control. Sometimes we forget who is in control of our life. That's why I said, who do we tend to when things are not going well? Who do we tend to when things even are good? Who do we tend to? When we shut God out of our lives, we shut out the very one who can meet the deepest of our needs. For you see, his greatest wish is to provide us with good things of life. Do you understand how wonderful that truth is? He is ready to provide us with all those things. Second, how can we be saved from those things in life which overtake us, which overwhelm us, or otherwise threaten us? to undo us. When the storms of life threaten us, we can turn to one who is stronger than we and stronger than the storms themselves. We can't avoid the storms of life. So they come to the good teacher, the bad and the indifferent. Just like God doesn't promise to keep us from the valley of the shadow of death, God doesn't promise to eliminate the storms from our lives. On other hand, God has promised that we can get through life valleys and storms if we trust that Jesus is in control. When Jesus is in control. So, this is the message of John 1, verse 1 to 15. Uh, John, uh, John chapter 6, verse 1 to 15. In the story, the feeding of the 12,000 or the 5,000, because it says excluding women and children. So, which means probably, which is the biggest number, men or women? <laughs> so, I feel it was the feeling of more than the 12,000 people. Philip was faced with that, yeah, what appears to be an unsolvable problem. Seeing the large crowd, Jesus asked him, where do we buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus, the apostles, and at the least 5,000 people were out on the hill country, just north of the Sea of Galilee. In no town nearby, Jesus' disciples need more rest. They wanted to send the crowd away, just send them away. Instead, Jesus asked Philip, how were they going to be fed? Especially this crowd of thousands of men, women, and children. For he knew that he would not live by bread alone. We cannot live without bread either. Yes, we don't live by bread alone, but we cannot live without it. So they had not eaten for a long time. So the question before Philip seemingly has no answer. Then another one of the apostles, Andrew, made a statement that sounds like a totally inadequate solution. There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. Then he said, what everyone nearby must have been thinking. What about they? There are so many people. 
How can you talk about five loaves and two fish when we've got 5,000 people? But I want to say, who is in control here? Who is in control? Not Philip, not Andrew, not the hungry people, not the little boy who has been given the lunch by a mother and begged him before he left home. Control. Who is in control? It is Jesus. It is Jesus. A wise man wants us, when everything fails, go back to the instructions. That formula works in these stories and in our lives. Our instructions are living, for living are found in the Bible. If, if you want to find the, the things that make you go on from day to day, just read the Bible. It is the manual for our lives. The instructions are in the Bible. So the central theme of the Bible is that by faith we can turn control of our lives over to God. Instead of taking control of our lives, we give it to Jesus Christ so that he is the one in control. On the theme of this story is that given the inadequate resources, we sometimes wake up to the need to turn to Jesus and let God be God. Let God be God. Given a desperate situation, we may suddenly realize that our strength is too weak and to handle the storm we face that we need to turn to Jesus and let God be God. When things are not going the way we think, we just need to turn to Jesus and let God be God. He is the one in charge, he's the one in control. It's a matter of giving up control to the Lord. Who is the one who is in control in the first place? You were created not on your own but in the image of God. So when resources are inadequate for the task, it may dawn to us that we need to turn our lives over to God. God has control, of course, of our life. He has control of your life. So when things are not going the, the way you think, turn to God. He's the one in charge. He's the one in control. It's just that we find that idea at every turn of the road. In this story, the apostles finally bring the small boy with his small resources to Jesus. There they can discover the wonderful principle of multiplication. When you bring everything, Jesus multiplies it. Remember, what happened when Jesus was at the wedding of Cana? When wine wasn't there, he said he brought them. And all the jars were filled and they could not finish. Like the boy and the apostles, we have only small amounts of resources to meet big needs. The five bay loaves and two small fish, the little boy's lunch, are small indeed. Bay loaves were the cheapest kind of bread in Jesus' time. According to the New Testament, William Buckley, only poor people are ate barley bread. Barley was used for feed animals. It was held in contact by most people. Buckley says that the two small fish were about the size of sardine. Those are small resources. Like the small resources in the store of the feeding of the 5,000, our resources are inadequate for men of the task we face today. We feel inadequate for a lot of things. Maybe I've been preparing for exam, you'd feel inadequate, you didn't have enough time. But ask the person who is in control. A little boy went forward for the children's sermon in his church. The pastor asked, what is gray as a bush tail and runs up and down the trees? The little boy thought for a moment. Then he said, it sounds like a squirrel. But since this is church, the right answer must be Jesus. It is not just in church that the right answer is Jesus. It is in all of life. The right answer for everything is Jesus. Our resources are limited. Some tasks are just beyond what we can do. Jesus can do. And does multiply our small resources. When you feel things are not adequate, ask Jesus. He is there to multiply all the resources that we have. He gives them double, double. In spite of our meager resources, the story ages us to bring those resources to Jesus. Just bring them to Jesus. And when you bring to Jesus, what does he do? He bless them. He prays. 
When we bring our meager talents and gifts to the Lord, He can and does expand them. So the gifts of God are potentially there in people. It's a matter of encouraging. They are used by encouraging people to use what God has given them. What God has given you. What is there? A story is told about an old German schoolmaster who, when he entered his class in the morning, used to remove his cap and bow ceremonious to the boys. Someone asked him why he did this. His answer was, you never know what one of these boys may someday become. He was right because one of them was Martin Luther. When we bring people to Jesus, like Andrew brought the boy in the story to the Lord, we find that God can and often does work wonders in people's lives. With them, just like Jesus used the boy and his life for great and glorious purpose, the feeding of the 5,000. Not only did Jesus feed 5,000 people in the mega gifts of the boy, there were 12 baskets full of fragments left over. That is what I call multiplication. And as I even indicated, he did not only feed 5,000, because the Bible says excluding women and children, which means it was made over 12,000 people who were fed on that very day. You plus your man will not amount to much in need. So you plus success will soon fade. You plus a big reputation will be gone in no time at all. But if you turn your gifts over to God, if you give it up trying to control all the aspects of your life and give up control of your life to God, that's the difference. You plus God can become an unconquerable uh, partnership for his life in the next. If you add God into your life, you know nothing is impossible. Because God is, is the one in charge. You are moving with God in every aspect of your life. And that is very important. It is fine that dawns to you that you can't control your own life and that you need to submit your will to God. And that's when the multiplication of small resources will begin to happen. This story ages us to remember 5 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to 12. 5 plus 2 times 1 is equal to 12. 5 loaves plus 2 fish plus Jesus times Jesus is equal to 12. And that's what it is. In the same way, God never stops thinking about his children. As a loving father, God weighs, weighs the opportunity to meet our needs. But we are not accustomed to receiving from his loving hand. Nor does it okay to us to pray. So we wander blind from problem to problem because we forget who is in charge of our life. God has so many blessings to pour out on us, all of us. He asks us to sit down and receive what he has given us. He says, let the people sit down. What he has to give, he gives with extravagance. As St. Paul once wrote, I, which I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of men conceived, what God has prepared for those who love him. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Do you notice that was transferred to Christ, was transformed by Christ? Something was transferred to him, and then he transformed it. The moment the bread, the moment the fish went into Jesus, Christ's hands, all was transformed. Christ can transform, only transform what is transferred to him. He cannot, trans he cannot transform what has not been transferred to him. So the moment you hand your life to Christ, he's able to transform it. Because he transferred your life to Christ. What that little boy was, it valuable was, it, it was available. It becomes something. And, and when I look at it, I would suggest and think also to say, do you think it was only the little boy who had to take some lunches, who had a package of food? There could be many, but they were hesitant to share. But this little boy didn't even ask you to say, why are you taking my bread? You want to feed all these people with my bread? He didn't ask that because he knew who was asking for the bread. So I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you are in your life. I don't know what you are facing. But if there's one thing I do know, with Jesus, no mission is impossible. 
Let Jesus take control of all your life, of every situation that is troubling you. Let Jesus take control. Just give your life to Christ. You will see great change in your life. If you have been going through difficult times and you say, I don't think things will change in my life, it will change. Because Jesus can transform anything that has been transferred to him. Transfer your life to Jesus. Hand your life in Jesus. And you'll see what he's going to do. Your life will never be the same. He can transform you to anything. He can do anything. May the good Lord bless you as you continue to hear the word of God. As you continue to meditate upon these scriptures that we have just shared. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We thank you for everything that you have given us. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that as we are traveling, are you traveling with us? What are we searching for? What are we looking for? Some kind of sign. Do we wish miraculous signs to happen in our lives? Here's the good news. What are you searching for? What are you waiting for to find? Jesus is waiting for you. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus loves anyone and cares for everyone. So it is worth traveling to him. It is worth asking him. We thank you, God, for all the good things you give us. Our food, our homes, and friends. And this beautiful, wonderful world to live in. We thank you that each day we see the miracle of your love around us. Thank you most of all for giving Jesus to be our Savior. Heavenly Father, we continue to come before you knowing that nothing is impossible with you. When you take the bread in your hands, when you take the fish in your hands, You can multiply them to anything you want. It will feed more than 12,000 people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, we come again uh, at the end of hearing the word of God. I always urge you that it is time to thank God for what God has done to you. Make a reflection <clears throat> of the whole week. What was God doing in your life? What are the things you just say, sometimes you don't even understand how it happened, but something good has happened. Or you want to just thank God for the life. You know, we are going through difficult times, especially during this COVID time. But I want you to know that why you are still alive is God loves you. God loves you. God is looking after you. God is in control. So take your time to thank God this morning with your offering. Bless them. God will bless them and you multiply. Or I will say maybe take your leftovers to God and God will multiply them. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring our offering to you. We thank you, Lord. As the young boy brought something to Jesus Christ and he changed it to be what it was. As the multitude came seeking Jesus, Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you and we confess to you you are the Alpha and Omega of our lives. May you bless this offering, Father, so that it can be used for your kingdom. Bless everyone, every individual who is able to support this ministry. It's your ministry, it's not our ministry. And we know that your ministry will never die because you continue to do it. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us 
Let us um, pray. As the multitude came seeking Jesus, we too have gathered here today. As the people were fed out, we too have received nourishment. As Jesus calmed the fears of these children, we too can face this day with confidence that God is with us, fed by Christ, empowered by the Spirit, loved by God. Go in assurance. Go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Amen.